It's the end of the line for NASA's Mars Phoenix lander. After exploring the Martian North Pole for almost five and a half months, Phoenix has performed its last experiment. We look back at the life of the Phoenix lander next on Real World. NASA is working to solve the mysteries of the red planet. And one of the keys, unlocking some of the biggest mysteries, has been the Phoenix lander. Phoenix spent five months operating from the spot where it landed on Mars. We were going there to the North Pole of Mars because from pictures we see that there's an ice cap there. Prasun Desai is a senior NASA engineer who helped design the landing system for Phoenix. So we're trying to find out, was the ice that's frozen now ever in liquid form? And so Phoenix went to the North Pole to basically touch and what we say taste the water of the Earth. Unlike the rovers, Spirit and Opportunity, which gather data near the equator, Phoenix was sent to a much more inhospitable spot on Mars. We sent a lander because we don't have to worry about moving it. And this way we can just concentrate on analyzing the soil. Phoenix's career skyrocketed in August 2007. And over the next 10 months, it traveled more than 680 million kilometers from Earth to Mars. Prasun helped to design the system that allowed Phoenix to land safely. So here we separate the lander from the crew stage that gave us power to get to Mars. In order to get a lander to land safely, we have to bring that to zero. Just like when you're driving down the highway in your car and you want to get out, you don't open the door and jump out. You put on your brakes, slow down to a stop and then get out to be safe. Phoenix had to do the same thing, but without brakes. So what we do is we use the atmosphere to slow us down. To slow it down even more, parachutes. And then we have jets that help us slow down the rest of the way, nice and soft, to just do a touchdown on the surface. There's a lot of math. Sometimes it's a very simple math, and other times it's much more complex, algebra and calculus, and those type of uh, uh, more sophisticated math to figure out how to get spacecraft there, and then how we slow it down, and how we land it. And that's the only way we can do it because we don't want to just throw it out there and hope it works. You know, we're spending a lot of resources, a lot of money, and everyone's time. I spent four years of uh, my life on that lander design, and we want it to work. Phoenix landed on a spot chosen for its scientific value. Once down, the real fun began. One of the first things we saw and the scientists were so excited about is here's a picture of the lander leg looking down to the ground. And what you see here is frozen water. There's an ice sheet here covered by soil. And the reason why this is not covered is because as we landed, all those jets moved the soil out of the way and cleared it up so we can see it. So just by the first picture, we knew we were in a great place to land. And from there, the discoveries kept on coming. Then we took pictures out into the horizon. And so what you see here is some uh, really specific features on the surface, these diamond-shaped patterns are going out into the horizon. What this indicates is that um, there was an interaction with liquid water and the soil. That's right. Scientists believe water created these patterns on Mars' surface. And the camera was just one of the instruments used by Phoenix to learn about Mars. Then it's got an arm, and then the arm would go and start digging trenches there to grab soil, the ice mixture and then it would go and put into a fancy oven and then it heats it up and then when it releases all the vapors, there's another instrument that uh, figures out what those vapors are made of and that's what tells us what the composition of the soil is. And so there's uh, about six other different instruments that the lander has used to uh, figure out all these different things about Mars. Phoenix took pictures, analyzed soil, and measured the Martian atmosphere for 162 Earth days. 
far surpassing the 90 days engineers hope to get out of the lander. But finally, winter and lack of sunlight spelled the end for the solar-powered Phoenix. It's just going to stay there until, you know, one day maybe kids now, they'll be just about the right age to be the first humans to go to Mars, and maybe they'll bring it back and put it in a museum. If you think you can be that kid, study up. You can learn more about the Phoenix mission on www.nasa.gov.